Hey, welcome back to DXB today. Great to have your company. Uh, as, as always, and great to have it on a very special edition for us today, focusing on all things education. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier on, um, the real education you get is from those that really inspire you. And hopefully our next guest is going to do exactly that. Um, 13 years old. He's already a TEDx speaker. He is looking to, well, sort of reinterpret to reform the education system as we know it. And if that weren't enough, he's the youngest ever university freshman here in the UAE. He is an achiever. It is Adam Al Rafi joining us now live on the show. Adam, great to have you on the sofa. Thank you so much for inviting me over here. Nice to have you on board. So, uh, uh, still very young, but have achieved so much already. And with such great amb big amb ambitions as well. We just m talked about the Mind Valley mantra. What about the Rafi mantra? So my mantra is ability, not age. And I sort of view it as something that like stands very close to me. It's essentially like a logic that people shouldn't be like viewed or like judged based on their age. And like they should be more judged based on their ability and what they're capable of. And so I think that plays a big role into like maybe making education less limited and more accessible to the younger audience and their curiosity. So Adam, I was thinking, I was talking about this earlier, we were talking about the, the, the connections of the people that are actually teaching yeah. you and how you really feel connected with those people. How do you feel that your networks around you influence you and help you? I think networks are one of the key skills that you could like to help learning outside of the classroom even be a lot better and stuff like that. I feel like um, networks play such an important role in that, you know, they propel you to like, you know, branch out, discover new things. It helps with curiosity, but it also helps you make new connections that you could use to follow your passions. Like for example, um, I'm massive into urban planning now. Urban planning and transport is something that I've gotten into recently. And I took that opportunity. And while I was in Canada over the summer, I used my network to connect with the CIO of Metrolinx, one of the biggest operators of transport in Toronto. And me and her and her team blocked out a whole two hour session. We had the greatest chat in the world. So yeah, it well, I did during my summer as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam, I want to talk to you about That's your crazy. passion for urban planning because I know yeah. we were talking earlier about this. Can you tell me a little bit about the Dubai Dash that you do? Okay, so I like to provide a little bit of background, I guess I am like huge into urban planning. I've gotten into all like the technical details, could talk about it for hours. Um, but I've started taking transport on my own here, even though it might not be as efficient. And as a way to not only get my friends like up and running into transit, but also to create like a really fun environment, I created a game called Dubai Dash, sort of like the, uh, the amazing race, but here in Dubai. So basically what happened, it's on YouTube um, and we raced around Dubai, four hours on the clock, a bunch of challenges that each team had to do. Person with the most, like the team with the most challenges at the end was the winner. Incredible. Yeah. I think we should do that. A little <laughs> fly dash. You're up for, doing you up for that? That's amazing. Yeah, it's really fun, yeah. yeah. And Adam, I'm curious, what motivates you to have all of these projects and create them and share them with us? Well, I think I'm like, I've always been powered by curiosity and that just creates like an endless stream of motivation within for me. I feel like um, whenever I want to learn something, like my love for learning takes over and I go, on a really deep like dive into whatever I'm learning about. Um, so urban planning, again, great example. But yeah, I think it's also really important for like everyone out here tuning in that another one of the skills that I would mention for you to have and like the mindset are dreaming not only big, but dreaming bigger. Mm -hmm. So like you really get like a scope of all the ideas and it helps, you know, cultivate curiosity like for you. Um, and it helps cultivate curiosity and it can, you know, really expand your horizons on what you think. I'm, you've just used a phrase which really struck me. You just said there your, about your love for learning. Yeah. Um, you don't hear, you know, forget, as you say, forget age, etc. Very few people, very, very, there's not very often you hear a phrase like that, but you've got that, obviously, that, 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 that lust and love for, for learning at the moment. Do you feel that sort of education is held back by a sort of traditional form? I mean, education is so mired in tradition at the moment. Does it need to be a bit more forward thinking in order to make more people love learning? I do think so, yeah, that education does have to evolve yeah. um, a lot. And 
one of the things that actually impacted him, me in my journey and like got in the way of my learning was the glass barrier between year groups. And that's also partially where Ability Not Age came from mm. because I was wondering, like I was super curious about the sciences, but I was stuck in year five. Yeah. And I was like, well, why is this a thing? If I'm interested in it, I'm capable of learning it, then I should be able to learn it. And I think that's one of the key points that I think that education should evolve on. Break those barriers, yeah? Yeah, Break exactly, yeah. Walls, yeah. I, I think we've got a, a future world leader here. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so do you have any tips for parents and children to be at where you're at? And, and th you said curiosity yeah. is one of the, the thing that drives you as well. Yeah, curiosity is a skill that everyone needs to practice. I'd say practice curiosity rather than be curious because it's a skill. And with every skill, it takes a little bit of practice for you to get it perfect. And like curiosity, trust me, once you learn it, once you keep on practicing it, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. It basically fueled my whole career, I guess. But another thing that played a huge role in where I am now is establishing, is establishing a good support network like I have done with my parents. They're awesome. I could not be here without them. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. So you're saying that year five, you wanted to do sciences and you know, you you looked for an avenue to be able to explore that. And yeah. then I know that you recently went to university, which is not normal for a 13 yeah. year old. <laughs> yeah. So you again you're breaking the bar those barriers. Can you tell us a little bit about your university experience and any other uh, programs that you're doing outside of your traditional yeah. classroom learning? Okay. So my university experience so far has been great. Mm -hmm. I'm in my second year of university and so far I've done a year of media and that's been really interesting. Again, one of those uh, curiosity deep dives that I had. You could probably teach us a thing or two about <laughs> <Yeah>. media. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the story behind why I picked media is also kind of funny because I was in the president's office like of the university and he was like, well, we have all these options. What would you like to do? They assumed that I was going to pick something in STEM since I was, well, um, good at it and I had like been accelerated in it before. But I picked media because that was the one thing I knew the least about. So Curious. that was how, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's how I went down that path. But yeah, aside from doing university, um, I've done two, three human accelerator programs, which have all been awesome. And they teach you a lot of things that you don't typically learn in school, mm -hmm. like blockchain, biomimicry, brain computer interfaces, cellular agriculture, all this sort of stuff. I think that if integrated into the like learning curriculum that we have today, would be awesome to truly prepare kids for the future. Amazing. Prepare Mind kids blowing. for the future. Yes, Adam, I need you to hang out with my kids. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, everyone's gonna have eyes on you and see how you're gonna progress in the future. Thank you so Incredible. much. It was awesome being here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Nice now, today's spotlight is on a counselling service revolutionising how individuals navigate their career paths by providing the right research tools, combining corporate experience with the power of psychometric assessment. This is MK Counselling Services. Take a look. I'm Meghna Khan. I'm a career coach and founder of MK Counselling Services. I help both students and working professionals in making data-driven, informed career choices through psychometric assessments and career coaching. So according to the research and survey, more than 85% people are dissatisfied in their job. The idea of my services was to bridge this gap through psychometric assessments and making informed decisions based on data rather than external and internal vices. Recently, we have launched our psychometric assessment platform called as innercloud.com, which is now available for students, professionals, as well as corporates for their hiring needs, training needs, and for giving internal team dynamics of the company. The major challenge which I faced was that, that people were not ready to invest in their self-discovery through psychometric analysis as they have a perception that they all understand about themselves and whatever they are thinking about themselves at the current moment is the right decision for them. 
because it gives a platform where we have diversity we have uh, people from different nationalities and we can help major part of the world by sitting in dubai So as you can see, it's not just the changing face of education, but also career counselling as well, taking in so much more information. OK, what's that time? It's that time. Time for the roundup. Amy, what do you got for us? Well, Tom, Dubai Municipality has announced that 300,000 students are going to benefit from healthier school meals. The municipality has launched its Promoting Healthy Nutrition in Educational Institutions initiative to help schools and nurseries change their approach to school meals, offering students proper food options in canteens and cafeterias. Nutritionists will collaborate with these institutions to reevaluate their food offerings, focusing on food supply and working with school administrations. There we go. Healthy school meals. About time. This you think? is long overdue and I think it's a global problem. Issue. Yeah, I mean, Jamie Oliver, he was a huge advocate in the UK for bringing healthier school meals. I mean, when I was at school, I lived off chicken dinosaurs and potato oh, smiley man. faces. Like, you know, that was what was offered. Custard. Yeah. What's changed? Toffee pudding. It, and is that what it's like now? I mean, <laughs> I haven't been to school for a while, you know, is that what it's like? But it's also a lot of sugar and a lot of these, um, these not real food, uh, you know, things that we offer to the kids that really um, kind of destroy even their development and their brain powers exactly. and the ability to sleep and their energy. So it goes beyond even just a meal. It really can be very, you know, dangerous for, you know, kids who are growing up. Definitely. Like a healthy meal is nourishing the mind. And when they're in a space where they're learning, they need to have that kind of nourishment, like brain power. Yeah. It's more than that as well, isn't it? It's just fuel, you know, yeah. and it's the right kind of fuel. You know, we're talking about we're talking about children here who burn calories a lot quicker, but they're a lot more active, there's a lot more going on, etc. And if we're trying to encourage this healthier lifestyle, you need to, to fuel that mind and fuel that body. So it's a great initiative. You're right, Lane. I mean, this is something that's been, that's been addressed numerous times in the past. I think COVID was a real game changer as well for a lot of people. It brought a big focus on it globally as well. I know back in our home country, the UK, there was a big move. A lot of Premier League footballers got onto the back of that as well. And it's good to see it here. Here, here it's always been, there's always been a little bit of a sort of battle when it comes to food in schools. You know, there's always been that, well, you know, it's fee paying schools and therefore it's your responsibility. And if you want to buy from the school, the prices are quite high as well. So taking a bit more of initiative to take ownership, I think can only be a good thing here. Yeah, I'm very happy that this is happening. Extremely happy. My kids are now back in the UK, but um, I, I, I hold a really nice, future for the the kids in this this country so yeah, yeah I, I, I i still have very very you know how a lot of people sort of think about school dinners and they start getting cold sweats and everything <laughs> like that but i used to love my school dinners <laughs> yeah. I, I went to boarding school from the age of 11 i think it was the best food i've ever had in my life you know <laughs> absolutely and i've still got some of those really weird habits even now to this day of things that i used to have at school which but that's the thing then is like it becomes a habit and you want these things and because you had them for such a long time yeah. it's re it becomes like an addiction right you want these things and comfort that's why we need food. it's comfort yeah. food yeah. and we tinned need to plum tomatoes <laughs> i mean tin plum tomatoes on toast we used to have that for breakfast at school oh, wow. that's very healthy i know i still have it and everyone goes what on earth are you doing <laughs> Um, and it's just, but again, it goes. That, it, it sparks something in that mind. They yeah. go, yeah, I'll take a bit of that. Hundred percent. Nice. Try it. Try it at home <laughs> if you haven't tried it. It's yeah. great. I still do tuna with uh, t no, t a tin of tuna on some bread. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> a tuna sandwich. Now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so right after this, we're going to find out why a gap year could be beneficial for your child with the guidance counsellor from one of our Dubai's top schools. Plus, we've got strings in the studio with our violinist Ian. Stay right there.